but it was still really exciting to see like another person with albinism in the wild, which is so crazy to like think, but I was like, yes, keep your composure. Don't be too <laughs> excited. This is absurd, but I was thrilled. You're listening to the Water Prairie Chronicles, a podcast that supports parents of children with disabilities by sharing the stories of individuals who have grown up with disabilities and the organizations available to help parents along the way. Stay connected with us by clicking the subscribe button and leave us a comment if you want to join in on the conversation. This episode is a continuation of my interview with Marisol, the mother of Johnny Kincaid, who plays Baby Jack on NBC's This Is Us for the final season. Be sure to listen to episode number 27 to hear the first half of this interview. And how she's navigating. Um, yeah. So I was just curious if he had, how much of that was the hearing for her, how much of it was the vision? Um, I, I, well, I think, quite frankly, it's probably a good marrying of both. Um, probably so. I know that Johnny's hearing is exceptional. Um, his speech so early I believe came from his ability to hear yeah. sound and nuance so well he's been imitating sounds since he was an infant like accurately sounds he would hear far away when our front door would be open and an ambulance would go mm -hmm. by um in the distance he would and I would be videoing him and I would play it back and be like that was <laughs> like you could barely hear that you know and he would be mimicking it so mimicking sound is really uh, a big thing that he does and i don't know if it's because he's visually yeah, impaired is it just assume. a talent that he has yeah is it, because you know? my father is very musically inclined and has that kind of ear but on the show that he was on the sound guy actually came up to me and said you know your son really has a very unique way of hearing he's like that's what i have um, because that's why I'm a sound guy. Like that's where, how I, how I found this passion. So this guy is listening to all the sound that's coming in and he's adjusting things as, as it's going on. Right. And he's like, I hear things that no one else hears and I can see your son. Often he was like sitting, doing nothing, waiting right. for a scene to be filmed. <laughs> um, and he's like, I can hear, I can see him responding to a sound that I can hear that no one else can hear. Um, so I, I'm grateful for that, but on that same note, I do know there are some things that are a little bit overwhelming to him. Yes. Um, and I recognize that as likely, um, just a sensory overload. Yeah. We, minimal, we used earplugs every now and then, um, yeah. like if we were in a concert setting or fireworks, that type thing, we would have. My bad. That. I did not. Uh, <laughs> and I've, it, we don't, you know, with the pandemic, we, we go out so infrequently, I think, in comparison to what maybe right. we would have done in the past that I just forget. And I just took him to his first baseball game. And that first 20 minutes was like, oh, yeah, we were sitting next to the fire. I didn't even know they had fireworks. I haven't been to a baseball game in a long time. And like they had useless, unnecessary fireworks. And those things just started <laughs> going off. And he was like losing it. And I oh, was no. sweating. <laughs> and I I just got tissue and I put yeah. tissue in his ears and that was super helpful. He talks about the tissues all the time now. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, why don't I have, like, why don't I have headphones or earplugs that you just learned? Well, we had to fire. experience it too before we learned. And I, I did yeah. the same thing. I'm pretty sure it was, it was, it was a, a tissue inside my bag that I pulled out. Yeah. <laughs> After Which I holding... had that mom thing. I had <laughs> tissues. That's like a mom win, you know, but I was just like trying to stuff them in his little ears and he's like, I want to go home and I was like we just got here yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh so this wasn't after the game was over the they were before the this was before the game even started and the music <laughs> and the announcer was so we were right by a speaker I mean it couldn't have been a worse yeah. seat for him um you oh. know what's funny and another thing that I'll ask you I have a question for you because did you find yourself with your husband trying to kind of navigate like the appropriate things to like say to your child and so let me give you an example um we were kind of far no place is really close on a baseball field and the players were on there and my husband said to him hey johnny can you see the players you know can you see the players on the field and i get really triggered um <laughs> because i try to save things in a way that is not going to have my child keep saying no no, right. I can't see that. No, I can't see that. Because quite frankly, like, I don't think he can, or yeah. I assume he might not be able to. And so I didn't say anything at the time. Um, but I told my husband, I was like, hey, next time it might be good to say, hey, Johnny, you see the green field, which he does. He sees the right. green field. I know he's do that. Um, do you see colors, other colors on the green field, which would be the players, right? you know, and like start there. Um, 
And so if he can see the colors and then telling him that those are the players, you know, like, mm -hmm. did you have that awareness at all? We, we did. And, and we, we've, and, and we were at baseball games at that age too, and realized that for Emily, it was meaningless because she couldn't, she couldn't track the game at all. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but what I, what I, when you were talking about earlier about him seeing things and finding the crumbs with myopia, as, as you've learned, even mm -hmm. without your glasses, you get that starburst effect. And mm -hmm. so that little speck, that, that yellow jersey is going to stand out. So it's, so right. it's, a, it's a good way to have them at least see that ho ho hopefully the teams have opposite colors. Yes. <laughs> so they're not yes. all yellow. <laughs> I just quickly have... I, it's fine to ask the questions, but I could just imagine how crappy it is to just have to keep having to say no. Like, I yeah. can't see that. No, I can't see that. And I, I don't want to set it up for that. But it takes a lot of forethought to, like, think that way. And so yeah. I know that my husband, of course, didn't, you know, and I made sure when I asked him, I was like, I think we should approach it with this and just try to consider, you know, we, um, some of the best advice we had was when Emily was a baby, um, we were at a, in a literacy program over at the school for the blind and the babies played and we were in listening to, to different lessons. And they talked about filling in the blanks of what the children are missing with language. And so we began when she was just an infant, just describing everything. And so by the time she was out and doing things at three and four, it was just habit that we were, we were narrating what we were seeing. And so she was able to see what she could. We, we didn't really ask her much. We would, we would describe it and she would tell us, you know, mommy, I can see that, you know, and then, and then yeah. I wouldn't have to. Um, right. But then around four, her, um, it wasn't OT that she had. It must've been a TVI that was working with her, um, gave her a monocular to start work practicing with. And so they taught her how to find the horizon, how to find a tree line or something to locate it. And then I had to learn how to help tell her what she's looking for for the main landmark and then how to get down to it. And then she could watch things. So she, she's taken binoculars to watch a hockey game. And she, she mm -hmm. loves hockey mm -hmm. because there's enough contrast with the yes. white ice below it. And she likes to sit up above where she, even though she's in, the, in, the, in the rafter, she's right. looking down at it. Um, and the puck is large enough that it'll, with the monoculars, she can find it um, with right. that. Um, but baseball, again, you've got so much contrast. And if you're, no matter where you are, there's something visually cluttered behind the field. So you're, it's, it's really hard for them to find the plane in between all the signage behind them and where you're sitting. You know, it's so interesting where we sat was behind this elevated, so it's the field. And mm -hmm. then it was this elevated, which is covered in like fake grass or ivy looking stuff right. right and then there's like this i was like what a waste of space like why is this like this and my husband said funny how he knows things about sports but not about visual impairment <laughs> right. stuff. but actually it's the same he said oh that's so that the um people i'm not gonna i'm not the sports person i'm not gonna say this right but anyway the people over by like home base can see where the ball is going because all that other stuff is distracting. Yeah. They need a flat background to be able to see how far the ball went or whatever. And I right. was like, see, you know, <laughs> things about this. Yeah. You just have it in relation to sports. Um, but it is interesting that contrast does make a huge difference. And quite frankly, it makes a huge difference for everyone. It does. I, I, I wish the world was more accessible, yes, but also accessibility, a lot of those features just make sense for the everyday person. They're I great agree. for all kids. Why do you think you don't need a lot of VI support with wording? Because little kids have stuff in big words and big letters until right. um, first, second grade, um, and then it starts getting smaller. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just like all of it makes sense for all of us. I wish, I wish that everyone saw how similar they were to people with visual impairment right they're not that far off before we finish the the baby years did you have home visits by ot vision anything like that when he was an infant so once i was able to um you know he had all the basic testing so before we confirmed genetics he had neurology test he had all the things to rule out anything else uh, everything else came back normal but his pediatrician as well as the neurologist uh, recommended that he go to the regional center which okay. are located all over the united states and uh, great support for a lot of families uh, unfortunately for us 
Um, I struggled quite a bit with the regional center because although our doctors uh, made recommendations for him to go there, they insisted that he did not have a dual diagnosis, that albinism on its own was not enough of a diagnosis to get their visual impairment resources, um, and that he needed to have, he was hitting all his milestones. He wasn't, okay. he wasn't impaired enough. Yes. And um, they actually used a separate outside program to support visual impairment. They contacted me. They said, we come in and do home visits. We do all these things. I was so excited. And then they were like, too bad, so sad, you don't qualify. And it was very overwhelming. At this point, I'm not even kidding. In this three-week time period is when the pandemic hit. And it didn't matter what resources we were seeking. None of them were going to be in home services. And for better or for worse, I dropped it. I dropped, I mean, the whole thing was overwhelming, right? So I dropped trying to find that. And I ended up finding out through early intervention services through LAUSD, um, his, his, or our liaison through that made a suggestion about blind children's center in Los Angeles and that they were independent. Um, and to just kind of take a look at that, um, which again was like a slow paced thing, you know, I said, "Eh, we're going to do this virtual thing and get him set up. Um, but through that, is how I ended up finding that program. And he started going there actually at two and a half. So we really didn't do much through the pandemic. He was able to see his eye doctor in person who um, is not a, who does a lot of therapy, supports therapy. Um, So we did patching and a lot of therapy and just things to help to strengthen his eye muscles as you as great for everyone, great for all kids, really. So we did stuff like that. And I felt like every time we met with her every three months, she gave us new exercises to do. And I just felt like I was supporting him at home right? best we could. And I let the auxiliary resources go. Okay. Um, so at two and a half, he started at Blind Children's Center. Unfortunately, they're located in Hollywood, California. And for many who are not from Southern California, it is not far on the map, but it is far on the drive um so it is um unfortunately not closer to our home and um he was only we were only able to commit to two days a week going there um but with that it is a exceptional program that supports um uh, typically visually sighted kids 50 50 and then um so half the program is kids with visual impairment which is just such a beautiful um program to have and um, through that, he gets additional support as needed. Um, but also just having eyes on him yeah. to be able to see where he needs more support that that we being first time parents may not mm-hmm. understand or know or even second time. Par- I mean, yeah. See things that are typical, um, things that may not be typical. So call our attention to um, that is been the most beautiful benefit to have um and i wish he was there five days a week but he is in a local preschool program the other three days a week and to be quite honest i also like that as well um to find kids in the community that Mm -hmm. live by us you know and and build connections and relationships um but to also just immerse him in not things that are specific to support his visual impairment see how that plays out he does have a slant board there we shared all about that his teacher from the blind children's center spoke with her you know just kind of gave her some basics uh things to watch out for um but truly it's been i think a really good blend of supporting him both ways yeah because one thing that i've that i've realized where we are um once they get into school they have regional schools that take in the vi kids Mm-hmm. But all, I, I believe, I may be wrong, but I believe all the other disabilities are in their local school and resources are coming to them. The visual kids are the ones that are going outside because of Braille services, not being able to get there. And mm. so Emily did not go because she was not a Braille student. Um, she was a large print student. And then she right. chose herself to learn Braille, but we kept it to two days a week so that she could stay in her local school. The drawback is, as you say, you don't have friends that are in your community when you're going that far. So when they want to do a birthday party or they want to 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 go out and play ball with a friend, 
it's really hard as a mom to work out that play date mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're mm-hmm. coming from, I, and, and Emily's friends were always opposite ends of the county when we were in those mm-hmm. programs. <laughs> so it was like a three hour drive to get to each other <laughs> instead right. of just, just to the school. And I think that's a big balance for VI kids, especially VI kids that are passable. Mm-hmm. I've heard that phrase a lot, passable yeah. <laughs> uh, with Johnny. Um, and, and just being a kid and getting all those benefits, yeah. it, it worries me how passable he is um, because I feel like that it can be a detriment. I make sure in his IEP meeting that I made very clear. Good. They actually asked for his, um, they asked for his acuity and I said I would prefer not to share. And the reason I did that is because I did not want them putting him in a category based on his visual impairment um, numbers alone. Right. And regardless of what that number is, these are the resources he needs. These are the accommodations that he needs, no matter how bright, how smart he is, how well his speech is at his age. He's still blind. Yeah. (laughs) He still needs the support. And I felt um, and have felt very much that... um, the the vi school that they offer here for third to kindergarten so age three sorry to can till they hit kindergarten is located equally as far away there's only one in the entire county and it's from nine to noon okay which helps no one as far (laughs) as you're spending as much time in the car parental (laughs) schedule no i we both work you know and 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 it's just too much it was too much so i chose uh, against it and he's still able to go to blind children's center two days a week so that's fine nice um but what is interesting is that i think la usd school system um used to have a number of blind schools and VI support programs. And that's where your child would go. Right. They, I don't remember how many years ago, but a while ago integrated those programs and now VI comes to them so that they are in a, a regular student population. Nice. Nice. Um, and I do think that that is great. Yeah. Um, I think it's a little bit of a balance. I think it's so exciting to think of the notion of a school that specifically supports all of your child's needs. <laughs> And then there's also like, hey, when you get out of school, no one is supporting your needs. Accessibility is awful. So figuring out how to navigate in a world that's not going to support you is is also of a really big benefit. So I feel like it's finding such a balance and not um, not over coddling, but making sure that they learn how to advocate for themselves Mm -hmm. and feel confident and comfortable in that. And then two, making sure that they know what is available for them right and how they can get additional support and feeling the confidence enough to utilize those things amongst their peers which i think is what makes me the most nervous yeah so emily was in the local school and she had itinerant teachers that would come to her and um the school for the most part the schools that she was in were good about getting large print materials ready for her ahead of time things like that she had one year in middle school where that wasn't the case. And so she was always about three days behind her peers in her assignments. And that was a problem on the school. Um, mm-hmm. it, she, she, she took it in stride, but it, it was a year that shouldn't have happened that way. Right. Um, that was before I learned to push harder mm-hmm. on things. Um, I, I played by, by the rules a long time <laughs> before I realized yeah. that sometimes you have to put your foot down and, and just mm-hmm. be, be mama bear or whoever you have to yeah. be. Um, but I tried not to do that as, as much as I didn't have to just because she, she didn't like being pulled out for things already. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't want to be the one telling her teachers what to do all the time. But we did find that every school that she was in and every teacher that she had, she was always the first visually impaired child they had. Mm-hmm. So we were teaching schools and staff how to accommodate. And we recognized that they didn't know. And so it wasn't a uh, criticism on their part. They just had never mm-hmm. had an experience before. Yeah. And, and it, it became kind of a family joke that school, school starting, we need to go do our mobility training now because <laughs> no one's going to call you to do it because they don't know to do it. <laughs> yeah. And we would, we would arrange to go back and meet the teachers a day or two before school started when they were in their room setting up. And so Emily could walk the room. She could look at the posters mm-hmm. around the walls. And so the first day of school, when the teacher's pointing to the, the rules poster, she already had it memorized. <laughs> so, And that's actually a part of, I noticed, um, a part of his IEP. Um, good. Being good. shown environments um, ahead of time, so he's aware. 
Um, and it's little things that you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't think of without that kind of experience, right. but those things were, um, have been put into his IEP, which actually is going to be an IEP that is sort of just sitting there for two years because mm-hmm. we are not accessing the resources of the school that right. they're offering. We're doing private at this point. Like good, good that you have it in place already. Yes. And that's been, um, I, I do share a lot about that on my social media. There's a little IEP button in the highlights for Instagram um, because that I think is one of the harder things to navigate the, um, you can tell me what the number, 504. Five, well, it is 504. Yeah. Um, a lot of people just settle with a 504 and I don't think that that's appropriate for VI kids. I, an I IEP is, is I think much more um it makes much more sense. Yeah. It's so nuanced and people really try to get parents to just do a 504. Um, and I get that the meetings are tough and it's a struggle. And after having that meeting, I feel for parents that have dual diagnoses on kids because yeah. the VI was, to be honest, pretty straightforward as long as you know what it is to ask for. Right. I can imagine the nuance of, of other um, disabilities is just like, like I... Um, I really feel it is best to find an advocate for uh, pre pre appointment to be able to help navigate you through that, and that is your right. Um, and I think it's also very important, like you said, push harder and also yeah. remember that these are legal rights, and no school district likes to hear right <laughs> um, <laughs> that repeated too much because they know that that is. Um, something that can impact them very, very much and impact yes. their funding very, very much. So um, you use the tools you need to when you need to use them, just like we're teaching our kids to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but that has been um, a challenge to navigate. And I hope once uh, school starts and he actually does, you know, I- I'm a private school kid. I don't know about you, but I grew up private school. And my husband grew up public school. And as much as I don't know that we could even afford private school, probably not. Um, the idea that he will get more support and resources as a legality and automatically in a public school Mm -hmm. does gear me towards considering public school for him um, when he gets older um, because it's a challenge to get those in private schools Um, and so it's a it's a little bit of a of a I also wish that I could guarantee he was in a small school program I feel like there's comfort and safety in that and that doesn't exist as much in the public school, not here in yeah. LAUSD. So um, I don't know what your experience was, uh, how large your school programs are where you live, but um, we had, I mean, we're in the here. largest school district in, in the state. And, okay. um, and so funding issues come into play. You have, you have busing transportation issues going on. Um, we were fortunate that after we moved here, we never had a, a, a redistricting in the schools the kids okay. were in. We did have to make, we used school choice for one year and then we moved them to another school. And that was more because of some issues my son was facing, but <clears throat> we didn't have transportation during that time because it was our choice to put them in the school. Right. Um, and then we put my daughter in the charter school and Christopher was just there for a year, but then he went to the local high school, which he could have walked to. So, um, right. so we had him close, but, um, but they were, they were larger schools and classrooms, for the most part, I think they had 25 maybe in their classes. Which is about it, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Um, that ideally, it would be it would have been less. And when they were younger, I think they were yet less because they had a teacher's aide. Um, <laughs> but in like my private school, 25 was like my entire class size. 30 was like my entire class size. Like right. It wasn't just the classroom <laughs> you were in. It was like literally the entire grade. Um, I I I find that I worry and then I tell myself when the time comes and when we experience the kid he is because that will not he is not me he is not my husband he is his own kid we will make those decisions when they come and he will help us unfold those answers I just find myself as a parent wanting to be like prepared right (laughs) and then remembering that you have no idea until it just right and, and his personality presents. is going to play a factor into this. You know, he may be that class president one day that's just leading the the crowd and making a difference in his entire generation because he was in that public school classroom. You know, it's, it's right. it, I, 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 I don't know what his path is, but I do see in what you've presented in him that he is a smart kid. Um, yeah. And so you're going to be facing what we did with Emily with that dual exception with 
the gifted level more than likely as well mm -hmm. as the physical disability and yep. trying to help the school understand that he needs to be challenged yes. at his academic level <laughs> while still giving him support and accommodations for the physical so that he can meet that. And so already I'm like, oh my gosh, are we going to homeschool? Am I going to homeschool? Am I, <laughs> I went through I that so much. Just like, like <laughs> I, I trust me, it is like low on the, but I thought about it, you know, because I'm just like, what is going to be best um, for him and how much is of his, I used to separate it. How much of his personality is his personality and how much of his personality is impacted by his visual impairment. Right. And I realized that they you are can't one separate the same. Them. They are who he is. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And when I learned that again, that, that third peeling, <laughs> it is a part of, literally is a part of who he is and that's it okay. Is. There's no need to, to separate it. No. Um, but he did have, when he started school, that, um, that overwhelming um, thing that happens with VI kids, with kids that are not visually impaired, just like oh, zipping yes. by them. And they're just like, whoa, whoa, because it doesn't come into his line of sight until a certain point. And so he was more reserved. Um, then he started filming and then he would be away a lot from school. He started filming as soon as he started school, which was very weird. Right. And, uh, so he didn't get as much exposure and on set was adults. Right. And, um, then as he got breaks and stuff and would go, he really transformed. He is that kid running around, you know, we got a note that he ran and fell and got hurt. And the, do the note from the teacher said, uh, Johnny was running around with everyone and as much as uh, he did get hurt we were really excited to see him running around with everyone just yeah. like every other kid without being worried or concerned or being you know and um, and I think that that's the other thing that he has taught us is just like let him unfold like as he does and it's okay right. to start one way it doesn't mean he's going to finish that way you yeah. grow you are always growing and um and now he like smacks his head on things because he's fearless, you know? And so <laughs> and he, 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 he's going to be able to help tell you more as he gets older. Um, yeah. Because you're, you're, you have a level of understanding yourself because of your vision. So you'll have that connection with him and that'll help. For me, I don't have the same level of vision, but before I, I have multiple sclerosis and okay. before Emily was born, I um, lost the vision in my left eye for a short time. Okay. I remember that the frustration of not being able to see on that side, trying to see through the cloud, you know, all those things. But I was grateful when we got her diagnosis that I had experienced that because it helped me realize that, okay, yeah, you can see, I could still pass an eye exam with that eye, but the eye was worthless for, for yeah. about, about a week and a half before the steroids really kicked in and helped it come back again. Right. But, um, but it was enough for me to realize that there were times that patching it was easier than trying to see through the cloud because your brain's so focused on trying to see. And I see that with her, that sometimes she will take off her glasses and just wear a dark pair of sunglasses so because yeah. just letting the eyes rest for a while is, mm -hmm. is what she needs. And, um, and there's other things she can do that she doesn't need her vision for. Yeah. And so, um, so she can listen to it. There's even if later, if he likes video games, there's audio video games that yeah. you're listening to the whole role play of it. Well, you know, so we're, we've um, met with a couple um, organizations and um, one of them, um, and the name is eluding me, pediatric, pediatric something. Anyway, I'm so sorry that I can't remember their name. That's horrible. Um, Partners for Pediatric Vision, I think, something like okay. that. Anyway, they invited us to a movie um, to see Encanto. This is his first film he ever saw, a big theater. It's all for VI kids um, and it was private. And so we decided to go and they provided uh, headphones with audio oh, with description, description. Yep. <clears throat> for that. So of course ooh, I took a set and uh, we got yeah. him set up and like, 30 seconds in, he was like, ah, <laughs> like, that's annoying. What it's, is that? It, you know? it, is, it is something to get used to. <laughs> yeah. So it was just so funny because I was like, look at this thing we're doing for you to support your vision. And he's like, what is that? Like, and he was able to absorb again, because I'm not quite aware exactly, um, you know, huge screen. We're pretty close. Right. Like he could see just fine. Um, and he's watched it numerous times again on a tablet right. um, up close. Um, and that works beautifully for him. Um, but it's just so funny that sometimes they're not ready for or yep. it's just not appropriate for what you feel like you're doing the right thing. And so. 
sometimes he takes off his glasses and he prefers to um his glasses aren't helping him as much with his up close vision they're really more for probably distance not. anyway yeah. so he gets annoyed that they move when he tries to lay down so he takes them off and i'm like where are your glasses and he's like no and i'm like all right like what you know you... a lot of new parents have asked how we get him to keep keep his glasses on how we get him to we keep hats on struggled with that too so we did not he i don't think it has anything to do with us i think it's just <laughs> his personality he has always been fine with it since we started he's been fine with it now he's so used to it he asks for hats or for a long time he's better now because it's gotten quite hot but we would put him in a short sleeve and he would ask for a long sleeve because he was used to wearing long sleeve right um he is just like an amicable kid um in a lot of ways the toddlerdom has adjusted that but he is comfortable in a hat it I know he can tell the difference of when he has one on and when he doesn't right. to his comfort level for his eyes. And he doesn't have a high amount of photophobia. Um, with OCA too, we learned that not only can you get more pigment in your hair, but you can also get some more pigment to develop in the retina. Um, okay. and I, hadn't, I hadn't heard that part. I knew, I knew the skin and the hair does. I mean, in fact, I mean, I was a toe headed kid. Um, the gene that we have is the one that allows you to make more and more pigment as you get older. And so, so Emily, will, she is darker now than she was when she was young. She was never a toehead. It was, yeah. my son was the toehead. <laughs> it's like yeah. you, you would have thought. I see kids all the time <laughs> that are toeheads and I'm like, Alvin is not. Yeah, <laughs> it's not necessarily. <laughs> not, not at all, you know. And, maybe, uh, ge genetically maybe, but not anything that's affected their no lives. expression, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anywho, I, I just, uh, it definitely has been, an always learning experience, but sometimes people ask like, like I'm doing something different than they're doing. And I promise <laughs> like, I'm not, you know, part of it is just your kid's personality. Yes. Um, and I think when it comes to visual impairment, once they're older, a little less stubborn and a little less uh, carefree, if you will, they will utilize the things that Yes, that they are really receiving benefits from, and that varies kid to kid. I think I had mentioned to you um, online about the cane question with Emily. Mm. She she did not want to use it. Um, she, in fact, her baby cane she drug behind her. Um, we ended up getting her a little <laughs> plastic mower, and she pushed that so she'd stop falling all the time. But yeah. um, but she she didn't understand why she needed to have cane training through school. It was just a tolerance that she go through, but. Yeah. Once she realized that for her to go away to school on her own, there's going to be dark stairways, there are going to be tunnels, things like that. She's going to be out after dark. There needs to be some kind of safety. So she'll use it every now and then for that. But she uses it more if she's in a bright sunlight day, even with mm -hmm. her glasses on, you get those glare issues that the completely glare, the can lack blind of contrast you. and yeah. yeah. And so, so the cane, even if she's not walking with it, it identifies her to people around her so mm -hmm. that a car knows she's in the crosswalk ready to go. Um, it'll reflect off of it. So it's it's more of a safety device than anything else. Yeah. And for her, she that... doesn't like crowds. So she's, she's learned that it identifies her in a crowd and people give her a little more space. Mm -hmm. They yeah. part. Exactly. They part it's it's, it's yeah. like part, 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 parting the, the, the Red Sea. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing, and I don't know, Johnny's so young. He happens to be very verbal, but he's still. He, he's still he's just young. a baby. Yeah. 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 He's not even three and a half. Um. I noticed that he he acknowledges when we discuss that he has visual impairment. Some people have visual, whatever, whatever, whatever it comes up. Right. He, I notice, and I can tell by his body language, he doesn't really care to talk about it. Yeah. And um, I know that he talks about it at school. They talk about it at school. He has an all about me book that they wrote about him. Oh, good. You know, and there's a whole page like Johnny need, uh, Johnny prefers to pull things closer to see sometimes. And so that we talk about that. That's all fine. He asks to have things pulled closer. But when I try to bring it up too much and probably too existentially for him <laughs> right now, um, he's just like, nope, not really interested. And yeah. I listen to that I pay attention to that cue um in my mind I'm just like okay it's like it doesn't even really need to be I just need to make sure you know that you do or so and so has albinism like you do right we haven't you know I'm excited for NOAA conference next year um yeah, we've we never gone but I've thought about it yeah yeah I mean I don't know where you are exactly and where it's always like east coast west coast they, they alternated yeah. every year I did not with COVID feel like traveling to the <laughs> 
hot of Florida for a summertime adventure. This but we're year. on the opposite um, coast from you, so I'm I'm in North Carolina. Okay, so, so that would probably have been an yeah. easier. Um, <laughs> but it's also hot. It's so hot. I just can't oh, see how everyone did that. Um, so it's going to be in Orange County here next year, and I'm hoping you know to go. And I feel like he'll be a little bit older and a little bit yeah. more able to like navigate conversation a bit. But I find that he doesn't really love talking about it. He knows the character that he played is blind. Um, and he knows what that means. Um, he learned to use, um, you know, minorly a, uh, cane right. in that because the character used a cane. Um, he is taught those things. He is taught pre braille. He sometimes asks, he's like, where are the bumps? You know, yeah. like he knows, yep. um, about what that is. And I just want to expose him. So he has those yeah, we did the awarenesses. Same thing. Yep. Um, but it's so hard for me to be like, no, you have to learn Braille or no, you need to learn to, you can't force it on no, anybody no. at all. Emily, em Emily came to us and said, I want to learn Braille. I, I, okay. I she had, How by old was seven, she? seven, okay. eight, it was when she was. And the school did, didn't agree. And her vision teacher didn't agree until he finally agreed to say, okay, one session, I'll sit down with her and show it to her and then I'll decide and he didn't finish the session before he was already writing me saying, um, yes, we, we will meet twi twi tw twice a week because yeah. he saw that she saw the need for it. Um, yeah. Not the need now, but what we realized later was what she was internalizing from these conversations we had had all of her life was because of the risk of detached retina, her vision may change dramatically at some point. And she wanted to, even at seven, she wanted to be prepared for the future. And that's yeah. that's kind of what it came down to. So and she to be can honest, read it, but she's not a Braille reader. Disabilities and visual visual impairment in particular are something that anybody can acquire Anytime. at any age. And it is very common. A majority of visual impairment does come with age. Yes. There are conditions that come as you. And so the lack of kind of awareness and, and uh, relatable, relatability to visual impairment, I think, infuriates me sometimes because I'm like, <laughs> Good it'll probably happen to you quite frankly yeah. also yeah. <laughs> also blue-eyed betty uh walking around not wearing sunglasses like welcome to cataracts like it, it's all um all of these things that can really severely impact yes. your vision um are an opportunity that could happen to all of us um mm -hmm. so i think that that's so smart of her at so young of an age to be like this could be something that happens to me. So maybe yeah. I should. Have and so the now tool. what she's saying is now that she's learned it, it'll be easy to go back to it. Mm -hmm. So it's there, but now but she, she doesn't uses... utilize it in her everyday no, life. No, but she's able to, I was, um, a couple of the kids that have been on the podcast told them I was writing braille cards to them because I wanted them to be able to read the thank you note that I sent to them. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was asking her for the new, UEB and she's like I never learned that <laughs> so, so, she was, so, for her to so I, I yeah. don't know if I did it right or not I, I haven't found out from, from from them if they were able to understand what I was writing but <laughs> that's a sweet approach though I'm we'll sure they see. appreciated yeah. it yeah okay so let's jump into mm -hmm. um, we we've alluded to Johnny's acting how did this come to be you said he he was I think I remember seeing on your social media that he was found how did that happen <laughs> So casting reached out to Blind Children's Center, who they had worked with some kids from there on the show before, as people might be aware on the show, This Is Us, the uh, visual impairment narrative, blind school narrative had been a part of seasons past. So they had um, found some kids there. Okay. So um, casting reached out looking for a child and the director of the school actually reached out to me and said, hey, maybe you should take a look at this. And I said, no, thanks. <laughs> Um, I'm a born and raised LA girl and just was not interested in having my kid be a child actor. Just and like he was two years past. old, right? Yep. Two and a half, okay. uh, just, uh, we haven't even started potty learning, you know, <laughs> like it was, um, and he's extremely verbal. And so I begrudgingly after casting reached out a couple times, sent a video while he was eating a sandwich. I just didn't even care. I was just like, let me ask you some questions. <laughs> And he answered them, and within three hours, he was offered the role. Um, wow. And um, because he was contracted per episode, they sent a contract over for one episode, and I thought, oh. okay, this will be fun. I'll right. take a couple days off work, and we'll do this. And no, it was just that they contracted him per episode because they weren't going to pay him to be on an entire season when he right. really was. He was on every other episode. Oh, okay. And um, 
because then another contract came and I was like, what, what's this now? <laughs> like, this? you know, um, <laughs> because I had a full-time job. And so my, my dad, thankfully, um, was his guardian for, we, we would go back and oh, forth. Nice. Um, nice. and so, because I don't know how people do it. Um, you <laughs> You'd really have to can't hire have a job to and, you. yeah, yeah, yeah it's no not. Way. Um, so it, and, um, he actually ended up doing so well, um, that they wrote him an entire episode, um, that literally, he was the principal actor for that entire episode. Which um, which one is that? It's called Saturday in the Park. Okay, I saw I saw that um, one. That's he, and, he did a good uh, job in that. Yeah, and uh, he literally had the most acting days of any actor um, on that episode. And wow. he, they wrote him as you saw dialogue that he memorized, uh -huh. and um, and he delivered. And a lot of people I've seen online have said uh, that had to have been a voiceover. And I'm here to say it was not. It was him. It was my three year old. Really did it. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's great. He turned three while filming that episode. So. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's, yeah. like I said, you have a smart one on your hands here. <laughs> yeah. A... <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of work, um, but it's wonderful. But I never would have known. Um, he just surprised all of us. He surprised everyone and I never would have put him in it. We have, I just recently got him headshots, which you probably saw online. Yeah, I saw that. Um, and so we'll, we'll see how things play out. Um, and it is something he really enjoys. Um, and it, that's just the nature of life. Things just happen and kind of fall into place. And it's been something that's been really great for him on a visual impairment note, what that has done for awareness, um, for parents of kids mm -hmm. with VI and then, uh, people themselves, um, with visual impairment that have seen the, that episode and then just that season in particular, but the whole kind of show was really transformative and has impacted a lot of people. And if he does nothing else, that is so impactful and will carry on for a long time. And so we're, we're really proud of him in that. Well, I remember um, seeing a post that you made about how things were starting to change on your account, and I think that's that's probably what's what's changed it. More people are finding yeah. you, looking for more information about about this the, this boy, and so yeah. he's already reaching and advocating for himself without even knowing it. Um, yeah, through and through, if through adorableness. Oh yes, um, of course that part. The opportunity <laughs> for um, for advocacy, but I love it. I love that people are there for him, and that I get to share things mm -hmm. that people maybe unexpectedly are experiencing and learning about. Um, that is a big goal for me because I don't, I don't need to just share VI things with VI people. Right. Like at the, that's fine. It's good, and I'm happy to do it, and it's supportive. Um, I need the everyday person who doesn't ever think about it to understand why there are yellow bumps outside of their grocery store yes. and at the end of their, um, of driveways. And I need them to understand, um, why it's so important to cross at a crosswalk and not jaywalk so that if someone yeah. around you has visual impairment, they're not assuming they can do the same and get hit by a car. Right. There's just all sorts of things that the average person doesn't think of that I would love to bring attention to. So the more followers that we can get, because my son, says cute things right and uh well, that's one, fine with me speaking of those those not understanding things one thing that emily has mentioned time and time again is the number of drivers who stop to tell you to cross it, it's dangerous when they 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 cause that situation so she right. actually will will pull out her phone and pretend to be texting so that they'll drive so on no one because yeah. it, it isn't because she she can't see the driver's expression anyway so she doesn't know what they're motioning to so she's not going to step out in front of them because she doesn't know what they're telling her. <laughs> but at also, the same time, you're one of 20 cars on the road. Exactly. <laughs> There's another no one, one beside is. them that's no. coming. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. using those crosswalks, using and, and when she was probably about five, we taught her how to navigate the metro system and the mm -hmm. crossings in D.C. because we would go as a family. And so she would get her large Which was an map. incredibly um, public transportation positive. Yes environment we are not that here we are here either. wonder we we do have buses I, I've here talked though. to my husband yeah we have buses i mean la is a, yeah <laughs> you you have more buses than 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 we have out, out, out yeah outside but of raleigh not... north carolina <laughs> and they're like oh this takes you here and then not anywhere else right. it's, it's just not it's not great and i wonder to myself like should we move to a place no, that's supportive of these things <laughs> you know like I've, I've literally considered like those sorts of things right because uh, it doesn't exist here, but you know, 
knows but between, where, where life um, will take U- us. Between Uber's um, bus systems and Emily has found some apps that will give her the public transit schedules wherever she goes. And so she just has to plug in her destination. It'll give her her options that she can take, whether it's a train, a bus, um, yeah. or if she needs to call a taxi. Um, yeah. And so those types, so as she's getting ready to jump off into full adulthood in a few years, I'm glad she's starting to learn those things. Um, yeah. And so by the time I mean, Johnny gets there. There's a lot of adults that don't know those things. No. <laughs> <laughs> One thing, and by the time Johnny gets to Emily's age, think, think about how much more technology that will be out there to yeah. help him. So, and that's the thing, too. You mentioned large print, that she's a large print you know, with a large print kiddo and like all through school. I think about that kind of stuff with Johnny and just technology, you know, having access through technology and being able to zoom and make things large print is just going to be so much uh, more accessibility. Mm -hmm. I'm happy about that. Oh yeah. I'm really happy about that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Having fun with that. I was just telling my husband, I said, I I, I hate that we've got to finish this, but, but I've kept you on this phone for two hours now. We could (laughs) could do this forever and we both have things to do with our son. So. All right. So. Um, so I want to I want to check again on your contact information. So Instagram okay. is at Holding Sunshine. Yes. Is that right? Um, is that the best way to contact you if parents have questions after listening to this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, and again, those that are listening, this is a great source of information for you. And um, and just what she's doing for advocating for visual impairment is fantastic. So check out that site, follow her, and get 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 some good information there. Um, but we have to do our, as I call everybody's favorite part of our interviews, the speed round. <laughs> All right, so just a quick review what the speed round is. It's a series of 10 questions that have absolutely nothing to do with the interview at all, but it's okay. a fun way to show how we're all kind of alike and different. And um, in spite of the differences that we're talking about with disabilities, that isn't what defines us. We have different different opinions on things. And so this was just a fun way that we came up with to, to, to get 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 to know each other a little bit better okay. so um so the first three questions are open-ended whatever you want to answer okay. and then the last seven are either or you'll just choose one or the other or both or neither so there really okay. isn't a wrong answer for any of this so the first question what's your favorite color uh teal oh that's our first one of teal <laughs> <laughs> um, we're starting out our second half with 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 a brand new color <laughs> what's the last like that. book that you read oh um Glennon Doyle, Untamed. Untamed. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You got it. <laughs> so proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite holiday? Um, honestly, didn't really care uh, until having a child again. And I would say Christmas. Christmas. I, I, and I think that's why that's the most popular one that, that, that we've had so far. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the next section, these are either or. I'll give you two words or phrases. You choose one or the other, and just whatever comes to mind first is is the right answer, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right, so cake or ice cream? Ice cream. Batman or Superman? Superman. Ocean or mountains? Ocean. Winter or summer? Summer. Watch a movie or read a book? Watch a movie. <laughs> Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Harry Potter and Twitter or Instagram Instagram all right so um so the episode 25 is where I I just put it out early this morning but that has the compilation of all the different ones um not as well done as I wanted it to be but it it, it is what it is (laughs) that'll be fun to hear Um, it was kind of fun if you listen to it it's going to be a little bit different so I I give a summary at the end for those that aren't looking at the video but if you watch it on YouTube you can see everybody's quick face as they're saying their things and I took all the books and I put, um, I looked up what the books were so you see a picture of the cover. So if anyone connected with one of the guests and they, they want to read what they were reading, they, they can go find it now. <laughs> so, so That's so fun. funny. Um, <laughs> the quick ones, I like, it's so, I'm like, but I want to explain myself. Because there's like a little <laughs> bit of it I like, but you don't, you can't. And that's like the, the whole great part of it all. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that makes me laugh. When no, those are wonderful. those pauses that I that I will edit out because watching on YouTube is funny because you can see the the angst on someone's face Panic. as they're trying to think, <laughs> and everyone has the same look. I I would do the same thing. I I I knew what the books. I mean, what the what the questions were even when I answered mine. I still kind of panic. I'm <laughs> uh, I have a visual 
like very visual recollection. Like I can see it. Like I can see right. it. And I'm like, it's all the colors. <laughs> well, yeah, you were describing it. You were... <laughs> like, yeah. But like, I couldn't remember the name. Um, and I just want to say, I'm really, um, it sounds kind of silly to say, but I'm so proud of you for what you've done. Um, oh, it you. takes a lot to have an idea and move forward with it first first <laughs> um second I, it's not as I've learned and you and I are both unique people and that we are okay talking about these things and sharing mm -hmm. these parts of our life that I feel like um that is what I hear most about people online you know they don't feel comfortable sharing about their right. child's diagnosis and and you don't I try to reassure them that they don't have to it's not everybody's um place to be no, an not. advocate and it doesn't make you any less better of a parent or not um, yeah. but I think that if you have the ability to be comfortable to share, and I really am a, a very open book, I don't mind sharing about a single thing in my life. Um, but I know that that's rare and I know that it brings a lot of comfort to a lot of people. And so I try yeah. to remember that when sometimes I share about things that I'm like, who cares? And I'm like, oh, actually <laughs> like kind of a lot more people than I would have expected or kind of interested in that mundane thing about my life. Um, but it is, um, sure a lot of work but there's also just the part of you that is this podcast so I really appreciate you doing it I'm Thank so you. sorry I that, that I gave you the runaround for so no, long no, it's just, it, I've it, been it, a different person but yeah it, it, this podcast is made possible by support from our listeners we want to give a shout out to our super fan Ravine S if you want to help offset the cost of producing the Water Prairie Chronicles become a supporter at buymeacoffee.com slash water prairie You've been listening to the Water Prairie Chronicles. Any resources mentioned during this episode will be posted in the description. If you're interested in joining us as a guest, contact us through the links in the description below. Be sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. We appreciate your support as we build this resource. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week for a new episode.